I'd like to say good morning to the class. My name is Lauren Lewis, and I will be your moderator for this morning's lecture. Welcome to another lecture given by the members of the Southfield, Michigan class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. The Dean of the Southfield, Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis. The President, Dr. Edward Yule. The Vice President, Dr. Ronald Atkins. And the Superintendent, Dr. Jarrell Lewis. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and there are God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language had any characters or letters in their alphabet that have produced the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. 
This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our primary constitutional objectives and or aims are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature's and the power latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. To, er excuse me, eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men, whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword, peace, slogan, speak the truth. Once again, I'd like to say good morning to all the brethren and participants in our morning lecture. At this time, I would like to call on Dr. Audrey Vessel for the prayer and Dr. Shirley Nelson for the scripture lesson. Philippians, the first chapter. Dr. Vassell. Good morning. Let's all bow our hearts and minds. And I'd like to give thanks to Yahweh through his son, Yahshua, for allowing us and putting it on our hearts to be here this morning and asking that he open, opens our hearts and opens our ears, spiritual ears to hear what is coming through the 
vessels from him. Um, with all these, I ask in the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. Nelson. Hallelujah. Was that Philippians, the first chapter? I'm sorry. Oh, there Correct. you go. Okay. Yes. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible using the correct and true original names. Saul and Timothy, the servants of Yahshua the Messiah, to all the saints in Yahshua the Messiah, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you, and peace from Yahweh our Father, and from the Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. I thank my Elohim upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day unto now, being confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you will perform, will perform it until the day of Yahshua the Messiah. Even as it is fitting for me to think this of you all, because you have me in your heart, and as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospels, ye all are partakers of this grace with me. For Yahweh is my witness, how greatly I long after you all in the affection of Yahshua the Messiah. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may examine the things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of the Messiah, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Yahshua the Messiah, unto the glory and praise of Yahweh. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds and the Messiah are manifest in all the palace and in all the places. And many other brethren in the Messiah, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach the Messiah even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached the Messiah of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding, in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, the Messiah is preached, and I therefore do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Yahshua, the Messiah. According to my earnest expectation and my hope, then in nothing I shall be ashamed but that with all boldness, as always, so now also the Messiah shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is the Messiah, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is to me the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I know not. For I am in a strait betwixt the two. I would prefer the returning, excuse me, I would prefer the returning and be with the Messiah, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance of joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Yahshua the Messiah for me by my coming to you again. Only let your behavior be as it becometh the evangel of the Messiah, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, 
I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And be not terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of Elohim. For unto you it is given in the behalf of the Messiah, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me and now here to be in me. I have read Philippians, the first chapter. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nelson and Dr. Vassell for the scripture and the prayer. Once again, I would like to say good morning to all of our participants and welcome. We sincerely hope that you will enjoy the lecture. Our scripture readers for today will be Dr. Felicia Hamilton and Dr. Shirley Nelson. And it is with honor for our first speaker to call on from the Southfield class, Dr. Sean Wright. Dr. Wright. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's a pleasure um, to be in the presence of the body of Yahshua. Um, he's always on my heart and mind. Uh, and I'm just grateful this morning to uh, just know anything about my Savior, um, Yahshua. It's unprecedented and it's revolutionary and i want to thank you for the opportunity this morning hallelujah hallelujah thank you dr wright and for our second speaker also from the southfield michigan class we'll be calling on dr lindsey wright dr wright I'd like to say good afternoon to the class. Um, sorry, we are in motion over here. One second here, I'm trying to get some place quiet. Um, I'm glad to have anything to say about our Heavenly Father, Yahshua Messiah. Um, and uh, just grateful this morning um, and today uh, just to be um in the body of Yahshua knowing how he really is and actually exists um I just wanted to um um I don't have a whole lot of anything new on my heart and mind um I'm just internally grateful for the things that Yahshua has showed me and bestowed to me um and kept me despite my own self um this gift that we have of knowing this gospel is it's a is it gift is a, it's not even a word really the it's the only word that comes to mind um the things that yahweh the 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 treasures that he has given us by knowing the simple things just as simple as his name having that be in, uh, bedded into us to know that there's no other name but Yahweh. There's no other name to be saved in besides Joshua the Messiah. These are things that in the world that they don't know. I recently um, watched his brother online um, and he did a rap and um, he had a shirt on that said, um, I do not follow Ah, uh, gosh, I'm trying to remember how he said it. It was something about I do not follow man, but I follow Yahweh. And it was a sweatshirt that he was wearing while he was doing this rap. And the rap, though, however, he entitled Christian rap. <laughs> and to me, it's always profound to see the individuals in this world because it's no longer a secret about 
the name of Yahweh. There's no debate on what God's name is. You know, um, the world knows that, but in the same breath, it's like Yahweh gives them just a little, you know, but without this vision, without this revelation, you don't have a full understanding of what it is that you supposedly know. And that's where the peace and the humbleness comes in because you, me, any one of us sitting here hearing this gospel day to day could have been one of those individuals in the world who Yahweh just didn't pluck out quite yet, you know, that wasn't bestowed this, this divine vision and revelation, you know, and I'm just internally grateful to be one of those individuals because there's nothing that separates me from me and the next person. There's nothing different from me and that next person besides the fact that I have Yahshua the Messiah. And, and that's becoming more and more clear when you just turn on your TV, when you watch the things that are going on in this world, there's nothing but devastation and hate and malice and, and crime and evilness. There's no love, you understand? And the world that we live in, it will drive you crazy if you let it. And that's why you need Yashua. We need him, like the air that we breathe in. We need him. You understand? We can't do it on our own. Yahweh is just making it more and more clear. He's ready to wrap this thing up. We are seeing it. Even the world is seeing it. They don't know what's going on, but they know something is happening. Something's coming. And we've been say, preaching that same thing over and over again for years and years. You know, Dr. Kelly's been preaching that. And, and it's been very clear, made even more clear now that this thing is being wrapped up. And I'm just grateful to be in the fold, be in the body. I ask Joshua to keep me despite myself, keep That's me grounded. You understand? Don't let me waver on this gospel at this day and age. It's That's nothing to waver on. You understand? He's been there always proving himself day in and day out. We get to the end of the race. Don't waver. Stay still. See the salvation of Joshua. It is real. He has kept us despite ourselves. And I am just grateful. And I know I keep saying the same thing over and over again, but thanks to be the Joshua for that. I don't want to say nothing new. Don't let me forget that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the things that kept us in this gospel. It is the thing that has held us on in this world that, listen, at the first chance they get, they will try to kill you. They don't want you to see that old boy is out there. He's working his job and he is a, he is the MVP of his job. You understand? Oh. He's good at it. He's out for souls and sons. So he can't get us with the Lord God and Jesus Christ. He can't get us with that. Talking about the sons. So he has to come another way. He got to say things like, oh, it, it's okay if you don't go to class today. Mm. You understand? He's got to say things like, you know, oh, it's it's not a big deal, you know, or what? It, it, it's all right. You know, you, you, you ain't got to, it, it's, it's all right that, you know, that, uh, uh, people out there in the world is uh, saying this and that and you out there trying to get that money. It's okay. And it's okay. We got to live in this world. We got to do our jobs, whatever, but it is not the all to be all. It's not the, the, the thing that should be important in our lives, making it in this world, trying to make an impact our name for ourselves in this world. That mm -hmm. should not be the motivation to drive. So, but those are the things that Yahweh gets you. I mean, the, the negative spirit gets you with. He tried to take your focus off of Yahweh. Now, listen, you ain't thinking about Yahweh if you're so busy busting your butt at your job. Uh -huh. You ain't thinking about those things. You ain't thinking about if you always at the bank cashing in checks. You're not thinking about Yahweh. You, uh -huh. The focus is not there. Uh -huh. So those things, that, that's how the negative spirit tries to come for the sun and keep you away from Yahweh because he can't come no other way. But if, it, if it's only by the grace of Yahshua, it's only by the grace that he just keeps us, keeps mm -hmm. reminding. When I, oh boy, now that I hear, when I, I have the saying that I say, I tell my uh, husband this all the time. Every time I see something coming up against me and I find myself going there in my head, in my heart, getting angry, getting distracted. How could this person do this? How could they offend me this way? Talk to me this way. Act like this to me this way. How could they do that? When I find myself going there, trying to look for justice from the people in this world, you ain't going to get it, first oh. of all. So stop looking for it. You're not going to get it from these people in this world. Mm -hmm. 
stop That's looking right. for stop looking for acceptance for people in this world. They ain't gonna accept you. You know who you are. You are a son of Yahshua. Act like it. Now be that. You know who you are, so be that. And that's what Yahweh is saying to me. You understand? This is my admonishment to others. And maybe it's just for me to hear it again for my own self. Be who you are. You are a son of Yahshua. Act like it. You understand? So stop looking for people in this world to accept you. They not. They ain't gonna be your friend. They ain't. It's all right. And listen, now, and even sometimes even your own family members, you know, they, that who may not be in this gospel with you, they may not accept you. But Yahweh plucked you out. And thanks be to Yahweh that he did. Plucked you out of this world, set you aside, gave you some understanding, not just gave you an understand, gave you a real revelation on what you're reading and hearing, being indoctrinated with, uh, you know, said what you're being showed. Yahweh's gave you a true understanding. We could look at this world and say, oh, the people that you, you can battle against people who say, Lord God of Jesus Christ is his name. You can battle against Jehovah's Witness. You can battle against the atheists that don't believe that there is a God. The person that don't believe that there's nothing but them own selves in this world. Listen, I can show you something about Yahweh, even without showing that physical body. These are the pearls and gifts that Yahweh has given us. And it's not of man and it's not of ourselves. You understand? So he just keeps us. He keeps reminding us. He keeps grounding us. And that's the, that's the ever presence of Yahweh. He is everywhere, always. When I was a kid growing up in this gospel, it wasn't until maybe I was really maybe like a teenager before I really understood the ever presence of Yahweh. It's not just, oh, when you go to class, he is always with you. In and out of you, always with you around you you can't escape Yahweh and that's why I be trying to tell my kids you can't escape you know they you know when how kids are they try to hide stuff they do something they have no business doing you know and then and then it's like well mom and dad already know well how did you know mom and dad know everything you know why <laughs> we're a type and shadow of Yahweh he knows everything you can't get and do stuff in my household and think I don't know do you understand a good parent is recognizing and is around and aware of what their children are doing. So self-same thing. We are like that because he is like that. He is ever-present. So when you are needing someone, needing someone to talk to, when you are being chastised, you understand? When you turn it off, when you are feeling love and of abundance, that is from Yahweh. That's it. His chastisement is love. His reminding is love. That's what that is. It's unconditional love. And That's I'm right. so grateful, so grateful for Yahweh's love. I'm in love. We got a song that talks about joy. You know, and one of the things, one of the things, the lyrics, when I was writing that song, that all that kept hearing over and over in my head was that I'm in love. I am. I'm in love with this gospel. I'm in love with Yahshua Messiah. Do you understand? That is my heart and my soul. I love my father. And I'm just so grateful, grateful that Yahweh keeps me despite myself. And I'm grateful and thankful that he has plucked me out of this world. Me, my family, my friends, I love you all. Happy Mother's Day to all our beautiful mothers out there. You understand? Yahweh has these. I, I wrote a letter, a card to my mother, and I said, I couldn't imagine a world without you in it. The type of shadow of love that my physical mother gives to me is abundant. But I know that my father loves me even more. And that's what gives me peace. That's what doesn't have me shaking in my boots when we say things like we are at the end of an age. We are about to experience something that we can't have any words to phantom to understand where we are going. But Yahshua has promised us something. And I am so steadfast and thankful that I was able to be one of those who are physically in this earth to ever to be able to see and hear and understand what Yahweh's promise is. I am thankful to be a part of the body of Yahshua and the Messiah. And I say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Wright, for that beautiful testimony. 
And for our next speaker, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Delonda Borum. Dr. Borum. You have to tell her how to unmute now. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I am so grateful to be a part of this body, a chance, an opportunity to learn something again today. Um, I'm so grateful Yahweh woke us up. Um, I really enjoyed the previous speakers. Um, my, my thoughts have been on my mind lately. Yahweh is always teaching us something and showing us something each and every day. And our desire is that we should be changed from this carnal way of thinking to a spiritual way. And we need the knowledge of Yahweh to do that. And when we take the time to listen and ask questions, um, you'll be able to understand a bit more about this gospel. And you'll always, and you will also see that um, everything works by pattern. And we need to understand Yahweh on how he operates. And he's part of our life each and every day. Um, my whole thing is just, I'm just grateful um, we need to fight the faith, fight for the faith, and Yahweh give us all things to us. He fulfills everything, and we need to hold on to the foundation of um, what we've been taught, and that's what I ask Yahshua to just keep um, keep me going in this crazy world, um, keep everybody safe, um, hold on to what you know, um, just hold on to everything you know in this gospel, because Yahweh is real, and I'm grateful and that he establishes our faith for us. It's not of our own. And that uh, faith has to be proven to you through Yahshua the Messiah, through the understanding of this gospel. And it's such a precious gift to even have something to say or even to wake up and breathe this beautiful breath of life. Um, I just, I don't have much on my mind this morning. I'm just grateful to be a part of class. I'm grateful to be a part of the body of Yahshua the Messiah and anything that he teaches me, um, I hold on to that. And I'm not letting anything waver, let me waver or take me away from this gospel. And I think that should be everyone's prayer, which I know it is. I just wanted to say, um, I'm grateful to be a part of the class and um, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Borum for that testimony. And for our next speaker, it's an honor and a pleasure to call on also from our Southfield class, Dr. Barbara Brazil. Dr. Brazil. Dr. Brazil to unmute on a phone, I believe it's star six. If you're speaking, Dr. Brazil, you're still on mute. Okay, maybe she's unavailable. We'll go ahead and move on to our next speaker. Also from oh, she she just came off mute and went back on. Dr. Brazil, if you're available. I don't know what's going on. Can anyone hear me? Anyone hear me? Yes. You have two, Doc, you have two uh, things on bar mute. Mute one of them or turn the volume down. Uh, Can anyone hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay, there you are. Yes. Can anyone hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Can anyone hear me? Yes, Hello? we can hear you. Can you hear us? Can anyone hear me now? We can hear you. Yes, we hear you. She's got her volume down on whatever device she switched to. She okay, hear I'm Barb. Turn your volume up. Okay. 
If anyone can hear me, um, good morning, class. I just hope everyone can hear me. I don't, there's something happening with my speaker over here. Okay. Okay, the volume is all the way up too. So give me just a little second to see. I don't know. No Let me know if you can hear me clear. Is it if it's better? We hear you. It's better now. We hear you. We hear you. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, well I'm I'm glad it's okay. I'm glad it's better. Over here it sounds like there's nothing happening. I don't see anything. I don't hear anything or hear any people or anything, but anyhow, I am so grateful. I don't know what's wrong with my speakers. I am so grateful that Yashua has brought me into um, this gospel. This gospel is like no other gospel. It's just made me, it humbles you. First of all, it humbles you. And seeing, I know we have to become as little children humble when you accept this gospel because it will tear down everything else that you uh, looked up to, okay? Everything else that's physical that you looked up to, it will tear down, you see, because it, it can't be anybody else but Yahshua. Like the previous speakers were saying, he is our true husband. You can't serve two gods. You can't serve, as the scripture talks about it, you can't serve Yahweh and, 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 and somebody else. You just can't. You see, Yahweh's a jealous Elohim. That's the way he set that up. You see what I'm saying? We have to give recognition to him. He set it up. He started it out in the beginning with Adam and Eve. You see what I'm saying? They were in a heavenly state, but he had to bring them down because, see, his whole, his whole purpose was to bring them back up. You see what I'm saying? He brought them down because he wanted us to see that he is our true husbandman. You see, and he's the only one that's going to bring us back up. We can't bring ourselves back up. Adam couldn't, I'm sorry. Eve couldn't, I'm sorry, and go back. Let's try this over again. It wasn't going to work that way. You see, Yahweh set it up, see, where he would bring us down. You know, when he went into this, uh, um, the side of Adam and brought out Eve, see, that likened unto the, um, like unto the woman, you see, brought out Eve. And excuse me, one moment here. Let me get rid of this. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, you know, he went into the side of, of um, he brought out Eve out of Adam. You see what I'm saying? And so just like when he was on that cross and he was pierced in the side, because see, that's where he's take, just showing us that he's just fulfilling, you know? So he was pierced in the side. Why? Because see, that was like a type and a shadow of we in him. We have to go back in him. You know, the woman being the world. You see, he died for the sins of mankind. He died for the whole world. You see, Yahshua is just awesome. He's just so awesome. And it's like when the previous speakers were speaking, it just made me think about how many times that Yahweh, you know, I mean, how many times that he's resurrected us. You know, when you think about the um, uh, children of Israel out here in the in the wilderness and when they had to, uh, you know, build that uh um, tabernacle pattern and see he he caused that to be that way you see what I'm saying for them to build a tabernacle pattern because it was going to be a place where he was going to dwell with them but see he knew they were going to be he knew they wouldn't be able to keep those the Ten Commandment law or any of the laws you know thank you and it's like he built that tabernacle pattern so they could offer up sacrifices because he knew they would be sinning all the time he knew they would never keep you know their promise you know, he knew they would never, they say, all that Yahweh say we will do. That's a lie. You did not do it. People, children of Israel, us, you see what I'm saying? So he have to, he, he built a, uh, uh, he built this tabernacle pattern and had Moses, you know, this tabernacle pattern, see, and showing, you know, the sacrifices there they had to offer up all the time, you know, they just couldn't help themselves. Yahweh knew they were never going to keep it. So they just couldn't help themselves. And it's like, how many times 
have Yahweh put the children of Israel even in bondage. You know, you know, we're in bondage all the time, bondage being like an until a death. We go to the death, a burial, resurrection all the time. I mean, I'm just these are just some of the things that came to mind when the previous speakers were just speaking. And it's like, I mean, this uh, he he built this tabernacle pattern. Thank you. And he's got this tabernacle pattern out here showing forth that he, Yahweh, is the only one. So he is the only one that keeps, you know, he's the true sacrifice. He is the only one that's keeping us. You see, he's the only one. He built the tabernacle pattern out here and all the vessels therein, all of the vessels point to Yahshua the Messiah. None of them point to us. They all point to Yahshua the Messiah. You know, I just think that's so beautiful. You know, we take, um, we can go down here with the altar. Now we know that Yahshua was on the altar. You see what I'm saying? He was, there was four, it was four points of blood on that altar that was placed on that altar from those sacrifices. Now, Yashin Messiah is the true sacrifice. See, he's this true sacrifice. And so it was four points of blood that he was pierced with when he was on that cross. It was his, his, both of his hands, the crown of thorn and his feet. It was four points of blood there. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And I'm saying, Yashua, he's just fulfilling everything. You see everything, you know, then you've got the, uh, the you, you've got, where am I at? Get back over in the, yeah, the, the tabernacle. Yes. And so then he was filling then, and then you've got the uh, holy anointing oil here with the uh, cup of the holy cup of the cup of holy anointing oil and the high priest here. See, he had to be, a, he had to officiate himself or had to be officiated before he could enter into the holy, into the holy place. And so that all was likely into a quickening or the spirit. You see, in Yashua the Messiah, he's our only quickening. He's the only, he's the one that gives us the Holy Spirit. It's him in us. The Holy Spirit is Yahshua in us. So he had to quicken. You see what I'm saying? This high priest had to be quickened with that holy anointing oil before he was able to even officiate within the tabernacle. Before he was able to even do that because he couldn't make a mistake because then Yahweh would just kill him dead. See, it have to be per it's perfect in this tabernacle because so Yahweh is the one that's orchestrating every single solitary thing. Now you've got blood showing here in the water and seeing Yahshua's blood is the only blood. See, that was the blood of the uh, sacrifices that uh, had to be killed. But see, Yahshua the Messiah being the true sacrifice, it was only his blood, his blood only people. That's what I'm saying to say, he's got this thing wrapped so tight. It was his blood, the only blood that we, that we could be saved by his blood, that we had redemption through his blood. Nobody else, nothing else, no other sacrifice. It was Yahshua's blood only that we were redeemed. If he wasn't, if he didn't get on that cross, there would be no redemption for us. See, he had to shed his blood. He's fulfilling, showing that he is the true sacrifice. And then you've got the door. Now you get to the door and the who's the door? We, it's like, get over there where it says, I am the door. Please just get that. Get, pick up, I am the door. Pick up, I am the light. Pick up, I am the bread. And I am the intercession. Just pick those up for me and just read just the part that says that. You know, it's like, we're not making none of this stuff up. If anybody is listening out there, other than those that are in class and already heard this, I'm just saying, that's why I'm just picking those up like that. Could you first read, I am the door? Mm -hmm. That's John 10 and 9. I am the door. If someone's got it where it says, I am the door. Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, see, I can't hear any, I can't, okay, I can't hear anyone on my end. That's what I'm saying, I can't hear, I still can't hear, right. Um, no, no, I can't, I can't hear you, Felicia, or anyone. Um, so I'll just, I'll just continue on. Um, okay, so then I, Yashua Messiah, he is the door. He is the light of the, you know, that, that, that uh, 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 seven branch candlestick, I mean, um, lampstand. He is the, excuse me, he is our light. He's the light of our tabernacle, light being synonymous to understanding. He is our light. You see, he is the door. He says, you know, uh, how does that scripture go about, you know, if I knock and you you hear, you know, open the door because he's knocking on our door of consciousness. You know what I'm saying? You know, and it's like he's telling us about this gospel. That's him knocking on our door of, of consciousness, causing us to understand he is the door. And then he is also the bread. He's the bread of life. And it's, it stays all this is in we got scriptures on this. You know, he is our bread of life. 
you know, the children of Israel, when they were out here in the wilderness of Sinai, and he rained down bread or manna from heaven for them. You see what I'm saying? To eat, he kept them while they were out here in the wilderness, while he was trying them, he kept them there. You see what I'm saying? With food, with water. Okay, he fed them bread. You know, he gave them bread. That was their sustenance when they were out there in the wilderness of Sinai. You see that bread there. And then you've got in the center here, the intercession. And then that, that um, the uh, Ark of the, um, ah, it just slipped my mind. Um, the golden, uh, the Ark right here. Okay, he's the intercession. Yahshua Messiah is our intercessor. He's the only one that makes intercession for us. You see, we can't do anything of our own. We can't go to anybody else. You see, if there's any kind of forgiveness or any anything, any of our prayers, all of that, that's Yahshua Messiah making the intercession for us and to the Father. You see what I'm saying? It's like, he's, he's everything, people. And then like in the most holy place, you have the Ark of the Covenant and the two archangels overshadowing the mercy seat. And you see, now those two archangels likened unto Michael and Gabriel, that eye in the center likened unto Yahshua, the all-seeing eye. You see, who sees and knows everything like the previous speaker was saying. There's not nothing that we do or don't do that he doesn't know. We can't sneak, hide from Yahweh, no way, shape, form, or fashion. He is our everything. He, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. You can't get away from Yahweh. Like you can't get out of spirit. Yahweh is spirit. And I'm just saying, just wanted to briefly go through that and did a poor job of it, but just wanted to go through to let you see how Yahweh is everything. He is everything to us. And, you know, I mean, we can't live without Yahweh. I mean, That's like right. the previous speaker was saying how much she loved Yahweh. That's what I, I mean. I feel the same way. It's like he's the only oh. man that you really love. You see what I'm saying? And that you feel the oh. love from. You can't, it's, you know, you know, it's Yahweh. See what I'm saying? Because you know, you know, it's real. You've never gotten this understanding before. You've never gotten, I mean, as many times as, um, as many times that we not listen to Yahweh and not did what he said to do or what he asked us to do, or, 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 or many times as we ignored Yahweh, ignored the thoughts, you know how we say, you know, listen to your first thought or things like that. We ignore certain things like that, you know, but Yahweh know, he knows all of that. You see what I'm saying? But see, he's constantly, he still forgave us, you know, the, like the children of Israel were always disobedient, but he still forgave them. He forgave them when they had to offer up that, uh, uh, they had to offer up those sacrifices. You see what I'm saying? Those sacrifices, you know, he, he forgave them. See, they offered up the sacrifices to show how merciful he is. He offered, they offered up the sacrifices. You see what I'm saying? So that they wouldn't, he wouldn't kill them instead of their lives. You know, I mean, how, how merciful is that? Yahweh, my goodness. You know, who does that? You know, who doesn't? Only Yahweh would do that. See, because that's how much, because he is mercy. See, he is mercy itself. It's not like he got a little bit of it or this and that. You know, he is mercy. He gives us everything we need. And he's letting us, he's making us see that we have to rely on him for everything, for everything. Don't ever think it's something you can do on your own because you can't. For every breath that you wake up in the morning to breathe until we go to bed at night, you wake up, you open your eyes, you know, it's it's light, you know, Yahshua woke you up again. He's given you, and like I always say, my prayer said, I always say, Yahweh, thank you for waking me up again to give me another, another, another opportunity to serve you and to give praise and honor to you, to love you, to know you. <laughs> I tell you, for everything, I thank Yahweh for everything. I mean, he mm. deserves everything. You see That's what I'm saying? It's like, and just saying how he, he's got uh, you know he just he's done everything for us i can't keep saying that uh, enough but get over there to that um chart where um uh it shows the operation of yeah you know it shows the spirit the ayah asha ayah i couldn't think of the name of the ayah asha ayah chart because see there is a, a spirit the Yahweh has an operation, another spirit. You see, he created this old boy, you know, this son of perdition. He created him to oppose him. See, so it's always going to be something. You see what I'm saying? Uh, that's going to be opposing what Yahweh tell us to do. He, that's right. the way he got it set up. 
It's like everything in the entire earth plane, he's got it set up, a negative, a positive, a right, a wrong, an in, an out, an up, a down. See, everything is always, a. you see what I'm saying? Something else like the opposite of, you see? And so Yahweh Elohim, he got this, he uh, he created this this old boy, you know, like it started way back there in heaven when he was cast out of heaven. He was cast out of heaven in man, not in the ground. People, you can dig all you want in the ground, you know, looking for uh, 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 Satan. He ain't down there. He's in you. That's He's right. in you, people. He's in us. You see, he was in us. You know, now those that are in Yahshua, Yahweh didn't cast it out because once Yahweh cast out that boy, old boy, he's out. It's not like he's going to come back in. You see what I'm saying? He done swept and garnished and cleaned our tabernacle, see? And, and he's he's now abiding in our tabernacle, on our most holy place. You That's see what I'm saying? And we recognize that. And we want to always remember that. Don't ever, don't ever think that, you know, that old boy got some hold on you, which, you know, we can't help from sometimes thinking that you don't even realize that you're even thinking it or even acting in that manner or whatever, you see? But like the previous speaker was saying, you see what I'm saying? It's always something. It's always anything that oppo opposes Yahweh. You see what I'm saying? That is that satanic spirit. And over here in the Aya Asher uh, chart, now you look at the, the revelation over here. You have Yahweh's a revelation unto us. He gives us our revelation. And you see what I'm saying? He's uh, he's our spiritual bride. And you see the attributes in that tabernacle is the Sabbath. He's our, he's our Sabbath or he's our rest. He's our shepherd. He's our banner. He's our provider. He's our healer. He's our righteousness. He is our host. You see what I'm saying? That's our host, you know? And it's like, and then, you know, and, and it's like, he's everything. All of this is, is, will give us eternal life. He's the life spirit, you know? He will, I, he is the, I will be what I will to be. You see what I'm saying? And then at the bottom of that, um, here it says the law and the prophecy. How do we know this? See, Yahweh fulfilled all this. You go to the law. You go to the prophets. It says over there, Isaiah 8 and 20, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light or understanding in them. You go to the law. He left us away. You go to the prophets. He left us away. He fulfilled all of that. See, and this old boy over here, you know, he can't go to no law and prophets, you know, and you can find him. I mean, from the standpoint of, you know, we can point him out by going to the law and prophets. You see what I'm saying? But see that old boy over here, he's the mystery. He's a delusion. He's the mystery of iniquity. See, the Yahweh set up to oppose him. You know, mystery Babylon. He's the God of this world. He's the, you know, he, he was the anointed cherub. You see that he cast out because see, he... <laughs> You know, he was, he's a liar. He's a murderer. He's the man of sin, you know, beast man, the accuser of the brethren. All of those negative things is going on in the earth plane. You see, that's been going on in the earth plane all up until, you know, still going on in the earth plane. But now we understand, now we see, because we can see the division. Now we see Yahweh and we see the difference. See, Yahweh done brought us in an understanding. Now we can see, see, all of that is the negative spirit. All of that, the lying, the beast man, the sin, the accuser of the brother. We watch the news and see all the lying and the and the, the uh, uh, beast man of sin, just how they're acting, the murderer and the man of sin. People uh, on, on, uh, on the TV talking about they don't know what made them kill so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so with something in me, something telling me I heard a voice, all this. They're right. That's what they're hearing. They're being, you know, it's that satanic spirit. That's made, that he's a murderer. He's been a murderer from the beginning. You see that just like with Adam and Eve told her a lie, you know, the first lie set up and told them and caused them to come down and be exited out that ground. But see, that was Yahweh's purpose. It's not like the satanic spirit had some uh, up on it, you know, or anything like that. That's Yahweh purpose it to be like that because that's when time began. That's when his operations, that's when Yahweh knew, see, he had to come in. He designed it that way. He's the one that had to come in. He was the only one that can come in and bring us back. Bring us back his bride because we are his children. He love us. So just don't ever forget that. He love us. He's not going to just leave us out there. You see what I'm saying? But you, he want you to recognize that it's him that's doing it. He want you to recognize that he is the only savior, only one that can help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't mean to get so emotional, but it's like, it's emotional like that with me because it's so, so, so true. It's so true. Yahweh, I am so thankful for you. I'm just so thankful for him, what he's given us. I tell you, he's given us so much, people, so much. And I always say, 
we have so much to be grateful for. Those were, I always say that because I, it's not even enough words that we can use or think of to thank Yahshua for what he's done for us. That's why every moment, any minute that you get, you know, to give praises to Yahweh, to be at class, to sit here, to listen. As Yahshua, cause your ears to hear, cause your eyes to see. You want to see this. You want to hear it. You don't want to guess it. You don't want to think it. You want to know it. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's just, it's that. It's that real. It's that real. We're right down at the close of an age. For real. No joke. This is yes. real. It's going out of here. You know, I was reading the transcript this morning. When, you know, uh, Dr. Kimley, it was just unbelievable. That's all he was talking about was the end of this age. You got over there in Matthew, you know, talking about when you should therefore see the abomination of desolation and so on and so on. It was just so, it was just Dr. I mean, and how Yahweh just set it up. And I was just thinking to myself, reading it like, wow, Yahshua, you gave this man, you know, you just plucked the man. You know, he already had to set up this, I just snatched him out and gave him this divine vision and revelation to show us, to teach us, see, to teach us, you know, to show us his mystery. He didn't have to do that, people. That's what I'm saying. He, he didn't have to do that. You know, it's like he could have left us in darkness or whatever, but the mercy that he had. And so he gave a divine vision and revelation to Dr. H.C. Kenley, you know, the only man on the entire face of the earth that he gave this vision to. You see what I'm saying? I'll tell you, you know, to reveal this vision and this understanding to us, because if he didn't give it to him, we wouldn't have never known. You see, it only if he didn't tell us how was was you know how do how how do we understand? How do we know it's true? How do we prove it? If he didn't say, go to the law and the prophets, we would have never known. We wouldn't have known how to prove it. He set up a tabernacle pattern. See, and it's got everything in there. It's threefold. You know, he set up principles: the death, the burial, the resurrection, the blood, the water, spirit. He gave us those principles, those things. You know, those are tools that we can prove who Yahweh is and how He actually exists. That's how we prove it. We we know how to prove it. We would have we would have never known exactly. You know, he gave us these things. That's what I'm saying. That's where his mercy, you can see his mercy. You see what I'm saying? He didn't, everybody don't have this. You, you talk death, bell, resurrection, blood, water, spirit out in the earth plane. What, what are you talking about? They don't understand that because then they can't put it together. Yahweh has to give you the revelation. So back over here on Aya Esha, I, he is the revelation. See, and that satanic spirit, he is that delusion. So if you, you teaching anything else other than what Yahweh has proven and shown to us to be true, you are under a delusion. We were all under a delusion until we came into this gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. That's just the way it, it is. You know, and it's, a lot of people don't want to accept that, but it's true. It's real. And that's how you, we can point it out. Well, as soon as you open your mouth and start talking, we know what it is in you. See, we know, you know, it's like Yahweh have given us because he's in us. He's given us that capability, that understanding. He's given us the power. You see what I'm saying? To raise a man from the dead. You know, he's given us the same thing. What, it, what is it that he's given? He's gave us his truth. And so it's this truth, it's the principles, the death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit. That's power. You see, that will raise a man from the dead. So that's power. You mm -hmm. see, he's given us that. It's not like he's left us empty handed. We do have something. We have Yahshua the Messiah in us. So it's a spirit in us. You see, that's doing the job. Not us. It's the spirit of Yahshua the Messiah in us. We can't do anything of ourselves. You see, we depend totally, totally on Yahweh Elohim. And it's like, I don't, I don't mean to be, it's just that this is it's just, it's just that it's so real to me. And I'm just so happy and I'm just so grateful and I'm so glad to be in, in class. And it's like, an, it's just like every day, you know, to give praises unto Yahweh is like a, a total benefit that it's a happy Mother's Day, a happy Father's Day every day. You see what I'm saying? He's our mother and our father. You see what I'm saying? Every day, all day long. He's been giving us presents all day long all our lifetime, some of us are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And he's given us all presence, all our lifetime, presence of this, presence of, of good health, of good jobs or, or whatever, you know, a, a home. You know, we're not out here in the streets. We're not like, I look at how some of the people even live. Like Yahweh set up everything. It's like, a, it's like, and you don't frown at it. You just thank Yahweh, thank Yahweh, thank you, Yahshua, for giving me this or for giving me that. 
And so you see how it's, it's, it's just, oh, people, I tell you, this, this is just, we, we, are, we are at the end. So you might as well get it in your mind. It, it ain't nothing that, you know, you have to look forward to, but the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah and, and that the kingdom of Yahshua in you and knowing that he's got a better place that he's already set up and established for us. And I would get scriptures. It's just that I can't hear anything if anyone's reading or anything. So that's why I'm just just going through it, just talking. But um, I, I guess I'm out of win. I just I just wanted to have something to say. And um, and I just thank Yashua for everything, for giving me this understanding. I, I really, really thank you, Yashua, for giving me this understanding, for loving me, for keeping me and my family and everyone. And I just want to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Brazil, for the beautiful testimony. And for our next speaker, it is an honor and a pleasure to call on from our Southfield class, Dr. Shirley Nelson. Dr. Nelson. Good morning, class, or good afternoon. I am so happy to be able to have anything to say. I thoroughly enjoy the previous speakers and everything that they said. This gospel is so phenomenal and it is absolutely the greatest, most awesome blessing to have the understanding of our creator, how he really is and how he actually exists abiding within us at this particular time in life. We are blessed among men. And sometimes it may not appear to be that way because we get bogged down into this world and the things and situations that we, that are, we are confronted with. But if we just take the moment to realize that all of our help, all of our joy, all of our happiness, all of our faith, all of our trust, comes from Yahshua. He is the only thing that allows us to be able to endure in this time. Now, he did not say that he would take us out of the world or that we wouldn't be affected by the things of this world, but he did say that he would keep us in this world. And when Yahshua prayed for the sons, he prayed, you know, and if you remember, I want someone to just go over there and get the scriptures because I don't want what Yahshua was telling me, never forget, never forget that greater is he in me than he that is in the world. Now, I don't know if I quoted that properly. If someone can get that scripture for me, please get it for me. And then also I want someone to go over there and get me Mark, the fourth chapter. Because Yahshua, I think he spoke through the speakers today it's beautiful testimonies. You can't not ever say that a testimony isn't powerful because it is. Yahshua is speaking through us. We say that the Messiah or Yahshua, see, who said that he is the teacher. He's the true teacher, the mm -hmm. comforter who is the Holy Spirit. He would teach us all things. I was talking to my son earlier today and I was saying I was reading Dr. Kinley's quote when he talks about over there, if we just take a moment, take mm -hmm. time to think and to ponder on any given, and I'm paraphrasing, if any given topic, no matter what situation that we can run into in life, if we would just take the time to think about it before we are yay or nan about it, see, then we will avoid many uh, times of humiliation. I want to get it real quick. Would you just? Yes, reference? if you have it to quote, it's just his quote. And I was thinking on it this morning. I don't know if you have it. With words of wisdom. Did it ever? I'll just go ahead and read it if you don't have it. Go ahead. Did it ever occur to you that we remain ignorant of attested truth and scientifically proven facts? most particularly because we failed to make a personal, detailed investigation of important matters. This failure to investigate positively retards the progress of our understanding and knowledge in every vocation 
and phase of life, every vocation and phase of life. See, the things that, I'll just read it and then I'll just make a comment, both physical and spiritual. So that's in our physical life and our spiritual life. If we can just stop and think, listen to the facts, the proven things, make a personal detailed investigation on whatever it is, why we feel this way, why we don't, go within self. This is how Yahshua talked to me. Go within yourself, examine yourself, look at what it is that Yahshua has done both for you physically and spiritually. He goes on to say, sometimes just stopping and thinking for a moment over the essential things of life eliminates many regretted years of poverty. Think on it. Now, this is both from a physical, and this is what he was saying to me, I'm just sharing to you. Many regretted years of poverty, sickness, humiliation, embarrassment, sometimes death and destruction. Therefore, we should learn, it's a learned thing, to pause and try, just try to think intelligently before we finally conclude affirmatively or negatively. He goes on to say, we should do this before an ultimatum or final decision is rendered on any secular subject, any topic, then he says the majority of us are to some extent guilty of this. I find them to be as it has been uh, mentioned many times or has been called the words of wisdom. Now the whole- Dr. Nelson? Yes. Just so that people are aware, that is an excerpt from volume one. Okay. Um, the textbook. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm in the introduction. I think I it's right. Up, search. Okay. But it it's looks on like your you're... screen now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure exactly where is that. Where is that? It's in volume one that I in see. In the and introduction. Right. Okay. And I, I have to be honest with you. I have, I, I bought some pamphlets, a booklet of pamphlets from Dr. Frank Lewis when we were at the last uh, event in Chicago and they have it on the very first page. So I forgot, I actually forgot it was in the textbook, but mm -hmm. uh, that is a very, a words of wisdom, truthfully, something to ponder about and to think on uh, repeatedly. I mean, to maintain it in our hearts and in our minds but it is the Holy Spirit in us that allows us to do that. So as the previous speakers talked about, that we need Yahshua the Messiah, who's the comforter, who's the Holy Spirit for everything, for everything. Our, from our waking up to our lying down, we need him for everything. And when we get up in the morning, that's where we, I pray that Yahshua allow my mind to Think on him, meditate on him, go within self, have a communication and a conversation with Yahshua. Do you know that Yahshua having that communication will allow us to sustain the things that we deal with on a regular basis? Not only that, I was listening not too long ago and they were talking about meditation and de-stressing. And they were talking about how you're breathing. And you wouldn't, we wouldn't have never put it together prior to understanding this, what Yash was all about. How that that breathing, see, that is a form of meditation. Take in the breath, breathe it out slowly. Take in the breath, breathe it out slowly. Deep breaths. And they were talking about how that, from a physical standpoint, your cells, your whole being reacts to that breath. Deep breath in, inhale, deep breath, or, or that long exhale slowly, that your whole body is illuminated from it. Now we know that we breathe. <sighs> We're breathing him, breathing his name. He placed it right in the man, the breath of life. So we know that 
not only from this physical standpoint, but like we need our breath to exist physically. We need Yahshua to exist always, always. And as the previous speakers talked about, we're plagued. That negative spirit is on the man. You've got these, this whole contentions that's going on right now about, you know, uh, Roe versus whatever. I always forget what it is, but the abortion, so-called abortion rights. And it's just so interesting how these things that will affect every part of um, mankind, once they make that decision from your insurance companies to being able to have maybe do, uh, you know, take uh, uh, things for, you know, birth control pills and so forth. And I'm like, Yashua, what did you say about it? I remember that Yashua, I remember I'm, I read it somewhere. I don't know where it's at. And I'm not going to go off to it, but I'm just sharing some things that Yashua had me thinking on and pondering this morning. He talked about, if you can hold where you get now, I'm not going to forget that. We're going to come right back to it. But since I'm going here, I'm going to go here. Uh, go over there where it talks about that that beast or that satanic spirit was waiting to devour the child. Mm -hmm. Because I remember it was someplace that I read, may have been in the textbook, where it talked about birth control. And you can get that too, if it's in there. And he talked about and talked about how that when in the Roman Catholic Church, for instance, the uh, those Roman Catholics were taught not to take any form of birth control. Mm -hmm. you know and But Dr. Kinley had brought out, and if that's in the textbook, I did not read it. He just had me thinking on this today. I should have probably studied it. You said Revelation, the 12th chapter is where it's yeah. talking about that beast. But anyway, right. when Dr. Kinley talked about it and he said that, see, that Satanic spirit. Go ahead and read it. Read the scripture. I'll, I'll have to start at one just to pick up the train of thought. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head of 12, a crown of 12 stars. Mm -hmm. And she being with child, prevailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Mm -hmm. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven mm -hmm. and they cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. As soon as it was born. Mm -hmm. And so we know that from a spiritual standpoint, that child to be born or that new birth, if you will, is talking about the spirit. But Yahshua has also allowed us to understand something physical to take the natural to understand the spiritual. You see what I'm saying? So you have these reflections in the earth plane. You see what I'm saying? When it talks about, now this is, I see you have up here, the post yes, and you, you can go yeah. ahead and read it. Mm -hmm. If I, if I can just say real quick, I'm trying to get this out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's technical difficulties all morning. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is in um, the textbook, volume one. He starts talking about um, just the present situation of the world. Mm -hmm. And then you have in volume three, um, um, the caption of i'm sorry reproduction versus birth control mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. goes into a little bit more um in-depth information mm -hmm. about what you're talking about but mm -hmm. i think the caption in volume one um kind of speaks a little bit to what you're talking about right now and it, and it does because i really was only talking about that part and like you know uh correct me if i'm wrong because i know that there are doctors in this school that can dissect that and can go into that in detail. Uh, he was talking to me about it because it was on TV, right at the part where you talked about the Roman Catholic Church is what I want you to go back to. It was right up mm -hmm. a little further up. And yeah, uh, he talked about that. because that, that true, that birth control method, if you will, that form of birth control that the, the, the Roman Catholic Church was saying, don't take birth control pills because look, you got now that satanic spirit. He don't want you to abort it because what he wants you to do is he's waiting to re, to devour the child. Mm -hmm. 
So you got to see that from all points, from physical mm -hmm. and then all points. But we also know that just killing babies, you see what I'm saying? Having babies, killing babies. So I'm, I asked Yashua, I says, I know you have the ultimate answer of all things. People are in this, such a dilemma about this because they know that it's going to be a lot of changes to come down as a result of it. But the true birth that we are concerned with is the birth of the Holy Spirit in you. That new, look, when the children of Israel, and we may not even go into any of this, but the children of Israel, when they came up out of Egypt, See, they were down there in Egypt for all those years under bondage. Yahweh had promised through Abraham that he would bring them out into a, uh, to a land that they knew not of. See, you see what I'm saying? That he would bring them on out from, I'm talking about from Abraham, from Canaan land. They had to come on down. And so now he they out there, and I won't go through the whole story, but they're out there. They're in bondage now with Pharaoh. But remember, they originated in heaven, right? The seed did, or the type, which was Canaan's land. And so he brings them on down there, and now they're in bondage to a world, to a concept, to a people. It is harsh bondage, a king, a ruler. That's likened to us being in bondage in everything physical in this world. See, in other words, Satan is the ruler of this world. So we've been in bondage to every aspect of it. Like the previous speaker, Dr. Wright, when she was saying, you know, you're in this world. If you the main focus is what I can do in this world, what the name I can make for myself in this world, if that's our only focus, then we're in a bad way. And most of the time, we don't know we're in a bad way. Uh, when we were in the world, we didn't know we were in that death down, out of outcast state. That's all we lived for was this, as the children of Israel did. But Yahweh had a purpose to bring them out. So he brings them on out of there, see, by a mighty hand. Like he brought every last one of us out of Christianity or whatever religious affiliation we were in. We didn't know that we didn't know that we didn't know that we were in utter darkness. We didn't know his name. We didn't know what he did for us. We didn't know his purpose. We didn't know how Yahshua came and fulfilled. We knew nothing. And right now today, when you listen to the ministers and the religious uh, various ones and organizations that are broadcast all over the world, a multiplicity of people, millions, millions of people that are taking in the lies that are being perpetrated on the world today as a result of that satanic spirit that Yahweh just let loose on this world. I mean, that's the reality of it, see? But there's a rem remedy. As he brought them out of Egypt, he put them into what we now know to be, Egypt being the court roundabout. Now they're- Demagoguery. I'm sorry? Demagoguery. Uh, now we know that i apologize that's all right there i saw someone was saying something to me but we know he brought him out from that court right about into the holy place and there and that's where the previous speaker was talking about while they were there he fed them he clothed them he kept them that's where he brought us from that court round about and placed us in heavenly places if you will see but while they were out there in that wilderness see Yahweh had already promised to them that they would go on over. You see what I'm saying? They would go on over, but they didn't believe that. So now they're out there in that wilderness. Yahweh causes Moses to go up into a mountain. You see what I'm saying? And he's speaking to Moses. And then he tells Moses, he hears a noise in the camp. And he had, tells, says, go down there into the camp because see the people have corrected themselves. You see what I'm saying? So even after they came up out of the state that they were in, they still got up there and worshiped and praised other gods. But now Yahweh, so what he did, see, you see what I'm saying? See, what he did, he told them, Moses went up there and they built that golden calf. Moses came down and Moses threw that calf down. You see what I'm saying? And we know that that's like an, that first law being broken. 
And Yahweh's now going to write along. I know I'm saying a lot of things, but this is where he's just got me going today. Y'all don't have a lot of scriptures or anything, but I am so thankful for what Yahshua has done for me. I'm not eloquent. I don't have all the words. None of us do. But what we do have sincerely and truthfully, he is our only advocate. He is our only hope and our only help. And that's Yahshua in us. So now if the, ultimately their destination was Canaan's land. So when they went over there to spy out the land, see, they didn't believe or have the faith. See, they didn't trust, see, Yahshua. You see what I'm saying? To do what he said he would do. See, so they doubted him and they went over to Canaan's land and had to bring a report back. And they came back with a false report. And this is what I'm saying. We don't want to have a false report. Don't, don't blaspheme that Holy Spirit in this, in, this, in this sense. Don't deny the Holy Spirit in you to be able to do and to accomplish. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm trying to say? Like we were like, oh, I can't stop this. I'm like this. I can't, maybe I can't stop cussing. Maybe I can't stop smoking. See, maybe what we're doing is we don't believe the Holy Spirit in us because Yahshua in us can do anything. He can do all things. Don't frustrate the Holy Spirit in us, in you, in me. Know that he's in you. Yahshua will let you know he's in you. You won't have all things right and perfect. You will make mistakes, but you call on Yahshua for correction and he will minister to you. He will talk to your heart and your soul. He will clear up all conflict that you may have in confusion. Yahshua does that. Not mothers and sisters and brothers and dads and husbands and wives. Not that. Yahshua does that. Right. See, I want you, Yahshua is telling me the reality come down to earth. Surely. This is not a plaything. This is not a plaything. So they went over there and they came back with the false report. And Yahshua said that all that, you know, they were going to wander in that wilderness for 40 years mm -hmm. because they spent 40 days, a day for a year, I think, or a year, a year for, however, a year for um, 40 years, they wandered in that wilderness because they came back with that false report. Mm -hmm. All of the Israelites that came up out of Egypt now, remember, he done promised them Canaan. But all of the Israelites that came up out of Egypt, except Joshua, Caleb, Caleb Azar, and I think it was Wanthenius, I believe, mm -hmm. died off in the wilderness. Their carcasses fell out there. And it was says that the book talked about how they multiplied greatly while they were out here in this wilderness and during right, that 40 right. years. And it was the offspring, which is considered the new birth, see, that went on over into Canaan's land. So the true birth we're talking about is that spiritual birth, birth of God in you, that that might be the thing that you then now are able to go on over. Look, Joshua is recognizing well, you no one's getting into Yahweh's heaven, so to speak, except his son. So mm -hmm. that's what he's recognizing is the son in you. He's got to see the son in you. And there has to be the evidence of the son in you. What am I talking about? Look, Yahshua will keep everything in order with us. But there might be some times where he'll let you just hit your head against the wall. Because that's how he teaches us. But don't forget that you have an Elohim. You have a creator, a comforter. See, who is there. Look, that when we're plagued by this thing, go over there and get me, and then I'm going to be done. Go over and get me Ma Matthew's, the fourth chapter, if you will. Mm -hmm. Matthew. I'm going to be done. Go ahead. Okay, Matthew 4 and 1. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua led up of the spirit unto the wilderness to be tested of the devil. Now, you know something. <laughs> we know that Yahshua, you know, one some books it says tempted. He was not tempted. Yahweh always knew what his son would do. But see, this is an example for you to see something. So go ahead, read. He said he went up into the wilderness to be tested of the devil. Didn't I say that's where we're at? 
That's it. We got to see this thing. I'm telling you, Yahshua, he has not, it is nothing that he has not already experienced. Mm -hmm. So if you believe him in you, that's what you have to, he's our only hope. Again, there's a scripture. I said, I know I'm saying the line. He said, let the redeemed of Yahweh say so. Mm -hmm. Stop acting like we don't know. If you don't know if he's in you, you better find out. And right. if he's not in you, you better pray and ask that he gives you of his spirit. Because there is another one. There is another spirit. But we want Yahshua's spirit. We want the Holy Spirit in us. Read the scripture, please. Mm -hmm. Second verse. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tester came to him, he said, if thou be the son of Elohim, command that these stones be made bread. Now, in the Holy Name Bible, it says when the tempter, I think, or King James 1 of them said, when the tempter, mm -hmm. aren't you tempted mm -hmm. all the time? When he came to him, read, say that again. But he, uh, uh, and when the tester came to him, he said, if thou be the son of Elohim, command these stones be made bread. Mm -hmm. but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Now, look, Yahshua mm -hmm. Messiah, he's not going to contend too long with this thing, but he's going to make some statements. I told you, I tested truths. He mm -hmm. said he's going to make some statements. So the devil says something to him. And this was brought out in Chicago. Mm -hmm. It made me think of when the, when the doctor brought it out. I, I said, oh, my goodness, that is so beautiful. I never looked at it like that. Mm -hmm. It's like it was a tit for a tat. Mm -hmm. You see, they arguing up in here. I'm telling you. See, there's some dissension. You see what I'm saying? The devil's trying to get something. But now what does Joshua do? He stands for, he quotes the scripture. That's it right. is written. Uh -huh. Man shall not live by bread alone. Read. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh. That's what gets you over. Not the physical bread, but Joshua's bread. Mm -hmm. His words. Read. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Now, look, took him up a little bit higher than where he was before. Set him up on a pinnacle. Read. And said unto him, if thou be the son of Elohim, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. In their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Yahshua said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt Yahweh thy Elohim. Mm -hmm. You see how he's sticking to his story? Why? Because he knows hey. it. You see what I'm saying? He's standing firm. He knows what he's about. This is what I'm trying to say. Read. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain. Keep taking him up higher. That's what this world does. Exceedingly high mountain. And what? And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the mm. glory of them. Mm. And said unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Look at that. Then said mm -hmm. unto him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship Yahweh thy Elohim, and him only shalt thou, thou serve. Shall thou serve. Now look, Yahshua had, had enough. He said, get behind me, Satan. Get thee hence. Because I is said that a man shall not, it's written that thou shall worship Yahweh only. And that's what the previous speakers were talking about. You want, we want this, we want that, but let Yahshua be your focus. Right. We do not, we, this is not knowing and understanding Yahshua is not just something we should be doing. It's something that we are or mm. is. See, not just some, that's just some, I know. We must take on that form. Yahshua form in us when food is assimilated into you. It's not just a part. It's not just something that just you did. It becomes a part. I'm talking about the good stuff. The amino acids, simple sugars and fats. You see what I'm saying? It becomes a part of your body. So we're not talking about just doing something. We're talking about being something. So that's the reality that Yahshua is showing me. But I want you to go to this last part, this last verse. What happened? Last two verses. Read. Last, that's Matthew 4 and 11. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 4 and 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and mm -hmm. behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Mm -hmm. Now that's what I wanted. 
Now, this is the man. Now, when it was said in Chicago, this is the thought. Yes, I think I wrote it on my notes. Yeah, Satan is talking to the man himself. Yes. The ruler of heaven and earth. And Yashri, and he's contending. Now, what you think he going to do with you? He will take you around his little finger and ring you on out to outer space. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about that satanic spirit. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you let him. But that, 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 that power, that strength is in Joshua. He, the devil, you don't, you know, you're no match. If you don't have Joshua in you, that devil will take you out. You see what I'm saying? But what he goes on to say is that when Joshua stand, stood his ground, get behind me, Satan. I'm worshiping Yahweh and Yahweh only, so to speak. I'm putting it on, I'm using you and me and Joshua. The devil leaveth him and behold, angels came to minister unto Joshua. That struck me. Look. You stay on your ground, have faith in Yahshua. He will always allow, he will always minister to you. Have you ever felt so down and out and you call on Yahshua the Messiah? It don't have to be no big eloquent words. It's just a conversation between you and your father. And he will talk to you and comfort you and give you peace. That's what he said he would do. See, his countenance will shine in you and he will uplift you and he will overcome in you because there's nothing that the Messiah cannot overcome. I just want to encourage the brethren, continue on with this gospel. Don't let anything take you from it. This is your peace, your joy, your help, your hope. There is none of that without Yahshua. Yahshua will get us through anything, even until the end of this age, and take us right on over into heavenly places that we're, we want to have that now, but we got to read this flesh, and we're going on. We're in the midst of the week. There's other weeks to come. We're going on to worship and serve Yahweh in spirit and truth. I hope somebody got some more out of that. I hope I left enough time for somebody else. Thank you so much for your opportunity for the speak. And I love the brother. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Nelson, for that beautiful testimony. Um, and I will be your next speaker. Um, if the, one of the scripture readers can get the um, scripture lesson. And um, I am always thankful and honored to have anything to say about our brother and savior and king and potentate, Yahshua the Messiah. Um, today has been a beautiful class. I have um, a uh, enjoyed what Yahshua has caused to be said by um, each one of the speakers. Um, so if someone can, um, and actually before that, if you can also get um, before the scripture lesson, uh, John the 14, uh, 14 and 26. Um, and we know that this, um, vision is a product of a divine vision and revelation, which was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And um, specifically, um, he didn't ask us to believe it just because he said it, but to make us prove it until we are satisfied, or make him prove it until we are satisfied. And being in this teaching and over the years we have truly learned that the boldness that he spoke on was not of his own or wasn't that it was him Dr. H.C. Kinley who would be able to prove it but it is the Holy Spirit which we know comes in the name which is Yahshua the Messiah who will be able to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good uh, and so if we can uh, get over there in John 14 and 26 for me. That's John 14 and 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Mm -hmm. 
And you know what? I was just thinking, if you could um, possibly start up a little bit, <laughs> it starts with but. Mm. So, you know, there's something that's mm-hmm. being said before mm-hmm. then. Um, and you don't have to go all the way up to one. Okay, I'll um, go to 18. 18 first. Uh, okay. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come. How about, I'm sorry, start at 15 for me. Okay. If you keep my commandment, I'm sorry, maybe 14. Okay. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you keep. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) But. (sighs) Okay. Start at one and read fast for me. (laughs) That's uh, John 14 and one. Mm-hmm. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believed in Yahweh, believe also in me. Now, this is Yahshua the Messiah. This is Yahweh himself in a body as salvation or the Holy Spirit speaking. And he's saying, let not your heart be troubled. Read on. Ye believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. Now, why is he saying that? See, and that's what the things that they tried to crucify him for. They said, not because you say that you're the Messiah or this, but because you make yourself one or equal with Yahweh. Now he's saying, if you believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. Why? Just because it sounds good? No, because this Yahshua, the Messiah that's speaking is none other than Yahweh in a physical body. That's why he's saying, if you believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. Read on. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Now he's saying my father's house are many mansions. And we're looking right here at this Moses chart. You see, and we talk about these nine divine attributes. Now these are not the only attributes that Yahweh has, but this is his nine divine principal attributes. You know, that wisdom, intelligence, and knowledge, the love, beauty, and justice the foundation, power, and strength. He is not, or he does not just have wisdom or intelligence or knowledge. He is the sum total of wisdom, the sum total of intelligence and knowledge, of love, beauty, and justice, of foundation, power, and strength. So if you see any love, it's a result of Yahweh. It comes from nothing but Yahweh. If you see any justice, if you see any power, if you see any strength, it's from Yahweh. He he is, he is those things. And not just those things, you see. He's the total sum of wisdom, of intelligence, knowledge, and so forth and so on. Excuse me. So it says, in my father's house, are many mansions. So you think of those of these mansions, that mansion of wisdom and intelligence and of knowledge. You see him saying, this is just the nine divine attributes. We know that Yahweh is limitless. He is all things. All right, so read on. Mm-hmm. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now he's talking to his son, he's telling He's telling this to his his disciples, I believe. Mm -hmm. Now, he's telling them, I'm going. See, now, wow, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. When Yahshua walked and he was in his ministry, it was a lot of things that he spoke in parables. And I believe one of his disciples even asked, and if you know where that scripture is at, you can grab it, where it says, why do you speak to them in parables mm-hmm. and someone knows where that scripture is at mm-hmm. if someone in the zoom knows throw it in the chat <clears throat> i just want to grab that real quick this was not mm-hmm. where i thought i would go but mm-hmm. we know what the scripture we were just reading it's the holy spirit that's the teacher that's matthew 13 and 10 and mm-hmm. the disciples came and said unto him why speakest thou unto them in parables Mm-hmm. Answer and settle. Um, I'm sorry, Felicia. You might want to pick up just a little bit. Uh, well, it's a trying to get some thought. thought. Yeah, it's a whole thought about the sower, so I'd have to start at one. Okay. Um, so where you started at 13 and 10? Yeah. 
Just go ahead and start at and, one. Okay. Uh, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Yeah. I was gonna say uh, uh, the third verse, if you uh, if you okay. want to. Third oh, okay. Verse, Matthew thirteen and three, and he spake many things unto unto them in parables, saying, "Perfect." Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he soweth, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell unto stony places where they had much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Mm -hmm. When the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell onto good ground and brought mm -hmm. forth fruit, some in hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Now think about this. <laughs> this is Yahshua speaking, and then he's telling them about basically receiving when you receive the word and how it falls on some, okay? And he's speaking in a parable. And at the end of the parable, he says, who has ears to hear, let him hear. That's right. See, now it's Yahshua and we learn from this gospel that it's the Holy Spirit that quickens the man, that gives him the understanding. Just like it says over, I can't remember what scripture, when I'm speaking, I never remember a scripture. Um, but it says that this one planteth and this one watereth, mm -hmm. but it's Yahweh or the Holy Spirit that gives the increase. Mm -hmm. Now he's saying, who has ears to hear, let them hear. Read on. Mm -hmm. 10th verse. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Now he said, in plain speech, is given to you who Yahshua has chosen to become a son, <clears throat> the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given, right? Then if you read a little further down, he says in plain speech what this parable meant. If you can just jump down. Mm -hmm. uh, 18, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. And then this is kind of what our previous speakers were talking about. You know, that negative spirit and his mass distraction, and he'll use anything to get you. Now, I'm saying when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom mm -hmm. and understandeth it not, because we have had many that have come in mm -hmm. and have heard it with their physical ears, but just like that scripture I referenced, this one planted, this one watered, but at that particular time, Yahweh didn't give them the increase of understanding. Mm -hmm. So for those, what happened? Mm -hmm. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth is not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. He's explaining. Now, this is the seed that fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. He says, he says that seed that fell by the wayside said the fowls kept by and devoured them up. Mm -hmm. And typically they get caught up in the cares of this world. Mm -hmm. Read on. But he that receiveth the seed unto stony places, the same as he that heareth the word and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arise mm. because of the word, by and by, he is offended. Listen, then he says, some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up. And because they had no depthness, mm -hmm. no foundation mm -hmm. and wasn't rooted and grounded in love. Mm -hmm. You see him saying, what happened to him? Read that again, Felicia. Uh-huh. Yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, by and by he is offended. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, isn't that that offense is a big one? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about offense so great that you haven't, you'll stop talking to your brother. And we've seen that happen. Mm-hmm. Will uh, choke you up. Mm. I've even experienced it myself. You so offended, you can't even call on Yahweh. Mm. And if it don't be for the Holy Spirit just to capture you against your will, Mm -hmm. we will be lost astray. That's right. And every last one of us is subject to it. That's the mercy of the Holy Spirit. That's Mm -hmm. why the humbleness has to remain in your heart. That's right. Read on. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, he also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Listen to this. They heard it, but mm. because of this world, mm. they choked up. Mm. And the deceivableness of this world, they couldn't see past it. Mm. Read on. Uh, but he that receiveth seed unto good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Mm-hmm. Will you hear that? Mm-hmm. We're warding you according to this measure, right? Now listen, and there's another parable where it talks about those that worked all day and mm-hmm. what he yeah. gave as reward was the penny. That's right. So yeah. some may have started early in the morning right. and worked all day. Mm-hmm. And then you had little Johnny that come in at the last moment Ooh. and still receive the word, same wage for yeah. someone who worked the whole day. Mm-hmm. See, that's, the Holy Spirit. that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. It's not by your measure, what you do. That's what they're showing. It's not by the work that you have done, but by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So we're coming towards the end. So I won't spend too long on that. So go ahead and go back to uh, John John 14, and then we'll pick up the scripture lesson. That's the third verse. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, we just said who this was speaking. Mm -hmm. This is Yahshua Messiah, or Yahweh, in a physical body as salvation. That's right. As the Holy Spirit. He says... Read that verse for me again, third verse. Mm -hmm. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, he told me that he was going to go and prepare a place for them. He had always prophesied what his mission was, what he was coming in to do. He says, but if I go, I'm going to come again and receive you. Mm -hmm. unto myself that where I am where was he at when he was speaking that Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit in a physical body there ye may be also so what Holy Spirit in these physical bodies that's right read on and whether I go ye know and the way ye know now he's telling them now this Mm -hmm. is the same Yahshua talking to his disciples the same one back there that was speaking in parables because he said it's not for the world to know, but it's for you. Now he's telling them, whether I go, you know. And the way, you know. Mm-hmm. But you think about that. Mm. That's what Yahshua has done for his son. That's right. He's told you where you're going, told you where he's going, and how he's doing it. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what you do for your children? You don't sit up there when I chastise my daughter. I don't just say because I said so. Well, sometimes I do. Sometimes. (laughs) 
But typically, I'm telling her why I'm doing what I'm doing for correction so she can understand. That's the same thing that he always done. He's told us his way. Read on. Thomas said unto him, Rabbi, we know not whether we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? <laughs> I mean, Thomas said, we don't know where you going and we don't know the way. And what does Yahshua say? Yahshua said unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. If this is not more prevalent right now, in my understanding, it's like a light bulb went off the other day. Let me give you something physical. We are physical. <laughs> Everything that you desire naturally. So, oh, I want to get my skin together. Oh, I want to get my weight together. Oh, you know, I want to do this. I want to say better. I want to do this. Do you know everything that you desire, your foundation is Yahshua? That's right. If you don't have discipline, this is what he told me the other day, Lauren, because a lot of the brother have been talking about lately, studying more. He says, if you don't have the discipline with me, what makes you think you don't have a discipline with your bills? There you go. Almost crashed while I was driving. Came like an epiphany. Mm. If you don't have discipline with me, what makes you think you'll have discipline with your skin, with your weight? Whatever it is that you are dealing with. So that's why Thomas says, look, we don't know the way. Mm -hmm. We don't know how. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm the way. Mm -hmm. I'm the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm the life. That's it's right. a scripture that says, looking unto Yahshua, mm -hmm. who is our the author and the finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. That's the answer. Look unto Yahshua. Learn of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Follow Yahshua. You don't know the way? Follow Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Learn of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. That's right. And Yahshua was told me right then, because then you, it's almost like a chastising of a child. Kind of saying, I'm so silly, Yahshua. But like a good parent, even when you chastise your child, I used to, used to drive me crazy. My parents would give us a whooping and then hug and kiss us. Mm -hmm. Say, what is the madness with that? <laughs> I used to never understand that till you become a parent. Mm -hmm. learn more about this gospel learn about how Yahshua is that's the same thing that, oh, don't beat yourself up Lauren you're trying to be disciplined I'm the way this is where the grace and the mercy comes from That's right. he told you the way mm -hmm. it's people who still don't know the way they're thinking they gotta pay they gotta do to get there and Yahshua says take my yoke upon me and learn. That's the way. Don't feel too bad. Let me show you. This is the way. Here you go. That's a loving parent. That's a true mother. That's a true father. Read on. If ye had known me, you should have known my father also. Mm -hmm. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. All right, so I'll stop at this scripture because we only have a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. I want you just to go and grab Philippians. So when Yahweh, came, when Yahshua spoke to me and said, the discipline gave me that understanding. If you mm -hmm. want to hear, you got to first start with me. Mm -hmm. It gave me that understanding. I felt kind of like, I can't explain the feeling, but it was almost a little melancholy. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you know, Yahshua... Maybe I just can't never reach that. Mm -hmm. Yahshua said, well, it ain't you reaching it. It's me in you reaching it. And then one day, the next day, I think this was maybe a Wednesday last week. The next day I get these scriptures and they drop the daily scripture at nine o'clock in the morning. 
And the scripture was Philippians 1, where mm -hmm. it talks about he who performed the work, just get it and read it. Mm -hmm. uh, Philippians 1 and 1. Paul and Timothy, service of Yahshua the Messiah to all the sons in Yahshua the Messiah, which are at Philippi with, with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace from our father Yahweh and from the savior Yahshua. Mm -hmm. I thank, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. I thank Yahweh upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy. Mm -hmm. Your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing. That now stop. Mm -hmm. He starts it off with, be confident of this very thing. Mm -hmm. See, because Yahweh is always teaching us through Yahshua the Messiah. Yes. Don't be discouraged when Yahweh is chastising you. That's right. That's what a parent does. That's what a true parent does. They don't just let you run amok. They teach you when you low, they pick you up. Mm -hmm. They give you the encouragement. So I felt low, like, well, how could I ever meet that? You can't meet it, Lauren. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. And this is the scripture that he gave. Read on. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it. Listen, you guys, yeah. brethren. Yahshua has begun a good work in us. Yes. Yes. The Holy Spirit is being formed in you. When a woman becomes pregnant in her first trial, when she's six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, she's no less pregnant than when she's nine months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's pregnant. That's right. But it takes time for the child to develop. Okay. It takes time for that child to be formed. So that Holy Spirit has to be formed in you. Mm -hmm. Read on. Uh huh. Even as it, it is neat for me to think this of you all because- well, I'm me. sorry, read that verse before, right. six again. Six, uh, six verse, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahshua the Messiah. Until the day, what's the day of Yahshua the Messiah? The instantaneous revelation. But here Yahshua hasn't left us. We're not by ourselves to fend for ourselves in this world. What he has put in us, be confident in that brethren. Know that Yahweh has performed a good work. And what he has done is good and very good. Be patient in the Holy Spirit and wait for Yahweh to continue to give us an understanding through Yahshua the Messiah and to have that Holy Spirit formed within us. With that, I'll say thank you and hallelujah. Hallelujah. That brings a conclusion to our lecture this morning. We'd like to thank everyone who has come out and studied with us, all of our participants and visiting brethren. And we sincerely hope that you enjoyed the lecture. We hold our Southfield Zoom classes on Sundays from 11.30 to 1.30 p.m. On Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone that joined us. And there will be a selection directly after the end of the recording. So you can please stay if you can and you hear the selection. And then we'll open up um, the Zoom if you would like to chat. Um, once again, we thank everyone for coming. And we would like everyone to stand in their heart and minds for doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both before all times, now and forever. Let us all say hallelujah.